This is the Unify Flex Mini. It's a five port layer two gigabit switch that fully supports VLANs and things. Um, on the back, we can see it takes a USB-C connection. So it takes five volt, one amp uh, power supply with USB-C type connector on it. On the front, we've got the five gigabit RJ45 ports. Now you'll notice port one has PoE in. So this switch supports being powered up by PoE. It doesn't provide PoE out, but it does provide uh, the ability to power it up via PoE. The only other thing to note on it is on the bottom, there's a factory reset, should you need to do a factory reset on it. Um, these are really cheap switches on Amazon. In fact, this one's for £39.18. Um, so it's a USW Flex Mini 5 port gigabit unifier switch. So we've got 5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports. One out of the 5 ports can receive both data and power via PoE to work. So that gives you the options to power it either way you want. So turn on the USW Flex Mini with the included USB Type-C power adapter or the uh, PoE 802.3AF Ethernet on port 1. So the uh, when I got this, because it's a European power supply, it makes no difference because I'm not going to power it up via USB. I'm going to power it up via uh, PoE. Now, the one thing about this switch is it can be an absolute pain to adopt. If you've got a local controller, you're going to be all right. But if you've got a, a cloud-hosted controller, it's not going to see it. Um, let me just power this up and we'll see what I mean. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. So this is our cloud hosted controller and the Flex Mini is just not appearing. Uh, now I've got my DNS set up and everything. It's just not working through DNS and there's no way to SSH into this device. So you're going to need a local controller to configure it. Now I have a cloud key gen two here and if I switch over to it, it should have appeared by now. Yeah. So you're going to have to adopt it in a local controller first if you want to then transfer it to a cloud a cloud hosted controller. So I'll show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and adopt it into the local. So this is a local cloud key gen two. So we'll click adopt and we'll adopt this in. So we're now adopted and we're up to date, um, but I need to get it into our cloud hosted controller. So in order to do that, once we've adopted it in our local controller, we're going to go to settings uh, and then under system. The one thing to note before you do this, your this is on 8.0.28. So you need to make sure that the hosted controller that you're importing it into is at least on the um, same version. So with that, make sure that both your controllers are on 8.0.28. Mine are, I've just updated the crowd con cloud controller so I can do this. Now if I click to system here, we've got this export site option. I'm gonna choose export site. And it gives us the um, link below to export your site. I don't need to download the site file and export it. I just want the device to appear in the cloud controller so that I can adopt it. So I'm going to just continue there and not bother downloading the file. And then it says to me, so this is Aiden on my migrator site. Go into your new network application and then import the site. Now I don't want to do that. I'm not creating a new site on my controller because I want to import it into an existing site. So I'm just going to click continue and ignore all this. Now we have the option to select which devices that we want. So I'm going to select the USW Flex Mini and then I'm going to put the address of our controller and I'm just going to hit migrate. So for now, I'm just going to skip that. Um, so you can remove the devices if you want, but you're better off just making sure that you've uh, got it in the new controller first. So what I'm going to do is skip that. And that's pretty much all we need to do.
So you just need the local controller so that you can point it to the new controller. So by uh, putting the address in, that's basically setting the inform address. So now we'll be able to adopt it on our other controller. So I'm going to the other controller. So waiting for it to appear, you're going to wait for a long time. It's not going to appear, but we've done the bit that we needed to do. So now I can just do a factory reset by um, sticking a pin in the reset button and it'll appear for on here to be adopted. So let me just do that. Find something to do it with. So I've just factory reset it. Um, I don't actually think you need to do the reset. Just waiting for it should do it. So now we've got our flexman here. We can proceed. We can adopt it. And now we're adopted. So we can go ahead and we can um, make any changes that we want to the switch. So if we go into, so you can see we're powered up by PO here. And if we open the port manager, um, we can go ahead and configure any of the ports that we need. So I say the fully support VLAN. So we've got native network VLAN. So we can go ahead and assign a VLAN to any of the ports that we've got on here now. So you can assign like different VLANs to each port. Um, so yeah, it is, a, it is a good switch, it's cheap. The adopting process is an absolute pain and um, I wish Ubiquity had fixed that. Um, but yeah, you've got your insights. It works fine as the other switches do. Let's just switch this back. So if you were thinking of getting one of the um, Dunify Flex Minis, they do work, they are really good. The fact that they can be powered up by um, PoE and you don't need a power supply for them, that's just a bonus. So um, if you found this video useful, please, uh, hit that like button to allow other people to find it. If you subscribe to the channel as well, and also hit the not notifications icon so you get notifications of any new videos as they are released. But I hope this helps and gives you some way of adopting it if you've been struggling to get it into the cloud controller. I'll see you in the next video.